Morning, Mary. Morning, Mr. Grant. Know what I got here? Two plane tickets. One has my name on it, and one has your name on it. Where, where are we going? Mary Richards, you are going to... You are going to... Mr. Grant, have you been watching a lot of daytime quiz shows? <laughs> Mary, what is your favorite city in the entire world? Paris. We're going to Paris? No, no, no. <laughs> We're not, we're not going to Paris. Uh, uh, what's your favorite city in America? San Francisco! <laughs> in, in the east, the east. In the east. Yeah. Uh, New York. <laughs> Philadelphia. <laughs> Boston. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yeah, that's it. My favorite city in the whole world. <laughs> Where, why, how? Uh, we're going this weekend. It's a special seminar on Politics and the press. Now, they asked me to take two people from the station, so I'm picking you and me. Oh, Mr. Grant, thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. Washington, D.C. is quite a place. It's my old beach, you know. Hey, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I covered D.C. for the Detroit Free Press. Spent three years there. Got a million friends. Important people, too. I mean, the kind of people that make a town like that tick. Congressmen, senators. Judges, bartenders. Oh, Mr. Grant, it's wonderful, just wonderful. What's so wonderful? Oh, Mr. Grant and I are going to Washington, D.C. on a junket. I didn't know you could get there by boat. <laughs> no, Ted, it's a press seminar. A freebie? Yeah. Well, don't pack yet, Mary. We'll see who's going to Washington. Ted, you're supposed to knock. You broke your promise, Lou. <laughs> what are you talking you about? You know what I'm talking about. You broke your promise. You said the next time there was a free trip any place that I'd get to go, and you broke your promise. <laughs> Lou, in the seven years that I've known you, you may have humiliated me, you may have ridiculed me, you may have screened at me, you may have cursed at me, but you never broke your promise, Lou. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, don't you like me anymore? <laughs> God, come on. <laughs> Ted. 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 Oh, you. You, you. <laughs> you. You know I wouldn't break a promise to you unless I had a very good reason. Well, there isn't a reason good enough. There's not? Well, I can't think of any. Unless, if you'd go away, you needed somebody responsible, level-headed, experienced, capable, and brilliant to take charge of the newsroom. <laughs> and you, you can't turn to anybody but me. Is, is that it, Lou? Uh, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Is it the reason or isn't the reason? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, they, yeah, you're right. That's the reason. Well, yeah. that's, that's a very good reason. Uh, that's a good reason, oh, Lou. You want to make me a producer. Oh. God bless you, Lou. Hey, how about that? Ted Baxter with the 6 o'clock news, starring Ted Baxter, produced by Ted Baxter. <laughs> Come on, Lou. You've got to tell Murray that you're putting me in charge. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell him later. But tell him now, Lou. He won't believe me. Yeah. You tell him, and I'll watch his face. <laughs> uh, say, say, Murray. Yeah, hello. Ted's in charge. Uh, what's that, Lou? I'm sorry I didn't hear what you said. Louder, Lou. <laughs> Ted's in charge of the news while we're away. Ted who? <laughs> oh, no. Hey, Lou, you're not serious. I had to. Oh, why? That's the face I wanted to see. <laughs> Contact book. 
we are going to be wined and wined. Oh, really? Uh, huh? Don't worry about a thing. You're going to have the most exciting two days of your life. Well, Murray, we're on our way. Bye-bye, Murr. Good luck. Bye, Mary. Goodbye, Lou. Aren't you going to wish us a nice trip? No. <laughs> Are you still upset about Ted? Upset? Not at all. It's amazing how calm one gets when the end is near. Bye. Bye-bye. Can I have your attention, please? I know what a difficult time this is for everyone. Nobody was closer to Lou and Mary than I was. <laughs> Rest assured, the torch has been passed, the ban has been lifted from the dust, and the ship of state is back on its course once again. And the clowns are running the circus. <laughs> Hold your thought, Mary. Now, as your leader, you'll find that I'm firm but understanding. You'll learn to love me and lay down your life for me. Carry on. He didn't say he could use his office. Didn't say I couldn't. <laughs> it's over. Hi. Hi. Okay, our first night in Washington. What are we going to do? Oh, uh, I'm not sure yet. Hasn't anybody returned any of your calls? No, no, but but they're they're gonna. Don't worry, don't worry. Anyway, I was with you at the seminar all day. They probably already called, and I missed them. Oh yeah, sure. Well, yeah. they'll probably call while we're out to dinner, and then we can yeah. check when we get back. So, yeah. what restaurant shall we go to? <laughs> Re restaurant? Mary, you can go to a restaurant in any city in the world. Hey, look, there are probably five terrific parties going on in Washington. Now, I've got some feelers out, and we're just going to wait until they call. We're just going to wait here? <laughs> well, this is where the calls are going to come. Oh, but Mr. Grant, I've never been to Washington before. It's my first night in the Capitol. I'd like to see some of it. Mary, don't worry. You're going to see all of it. Trust me. Yeah? Huh? See what I mean? Where will it be? Hickory Hill? George K. <laughs> let us see. Lou Grant here. Uh, yeah, she is. Huh? Yeah, somebody for you. Oh. <laughs> for any call. Yeah, well, try not to tie up the line for too long. <laughs> Hello? <clears throat> yes. Sure, I remember you at the reception. The tall one with all the ribbons. <laughs> oh, ah. Uh, just a minute. Uh, uh, let me just see. Uh, hang on. Mr. Grant, mm -hmm. how would you like to go to a party at the French Embassy? Embassy party? We're going to do a lot better than that. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much, but we're going to uh, be having other plans. Yeah. But thanks anyway. Bye. Never been to an embassy party. <laughs> They're dull. Anyway, every guy in town uses that lie. Would you like to go to a party at the French Embassy? <laughs> Who was that? The ambassador. <laughs> Some guys have it down better than others. <laughs> Mary, you won't be sorry. Trust me, just wait till my stuff starts coming in. <laughs> yep. Back to my... <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lou Grant. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, then. What'd you do, write your number on a wall someplace? <laughs> oh. oh, hi. Yeah, sure, I remember you, Phil. Well, I don't know. Uh, we may have plans later on. Why? Aha, uh -huh. where are you now? Okay, well, listen, why don't you come on up and we'll talk about it. Room 741. Okay, bye.
do you think this is, a bus depot? You invite anybody up who calls? Mr. Grant, I met him at the seminar, and he wants to take us to dinner. Oh, please, Mr. Grant, just dinner. Then we'll come right back, we'll collect all your messages, and we'll decide what to do then. No, 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 no. They'll call here while I'm out, and then I'll call them back, and they'll be out. Now, we're only going to be here two days, and I don't want to miss it. All right, look. Look, it's your first night in Washington. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make reservations for you and your friend at the best restaurant in town. Oh, Mr. Grant. You're going to go to the Sans Souci. That's French for without souci. <laughs> <laughs> this is the place in Washington where everybody who is anybody goes to be seen. Oh. Hello. I would like a reservation for two at 9 o'clock tonight, please. Oh, uh, are you sure you can't fit my party in, Lou Grant? Eh? Yeah. Hey, look. <laughs> Is uh, Maurice, the head waiter, still working there? Oh. Ten years ago? <laughs> uh -huh. I guess he died without mentioning how close we were. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, thank you. Maurice died. And you're worried about having a good time tonight. <laughs> oh. Maurice. Hi, Mary. Bill, how hi. are you? Come on in. Thank you. Uh, Congressman Phil Whitman, I'd like you to meet Lou Grant. How are you, Lou? Oh, hi. We discovered we're neighbors, Minnesota, Iowa. Oh, yeah. Good to meet you, Congressman Whitman. Call him Phil. He's supposed to tell me that. Call me Phil. <laughs> well, anybody, uh, anybody hungry? Starved. Good. Uh, look, I'm expecting some important calls, Phil. Uh, why don't you and Mary just go and have a good time? Yeah. Well, I'll uh, just make reservations for us. And Mary, where uh, where would you like to go? Oh, any place you say. How about uh, Sans Souci? Oh, no, we can't go there. Why not? Well, Mr. Grant tried to get reservations earlier. They're full. Oh, well, no. Sometimes you just have to be uh, a little persistent. Mr. Grant was persistent. No, I wasn't persistent. Oh, Mr. Grant, I thought you were very persistent. Well, I wasn't persistent, Mary. <laughs> Hello, Gregory. Uh, Phil Whitman. Oh, fine, thank you. How are you? Uh, listen, I'd like uh, dinner reservations for 2 at 8.30, please. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, sure, 8.30. I was trying for 9 o'clock. <laughs> She's over. Hi. Hi. All set for the seminar? Yeah, almost. How'd it go last night? Any of your friends call back? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I dozed off. Uh, how'd I go with you? Oh, dull. It was dull evening, dull, yeah. dull conversation. And I lost all that sleep, you know, got in very late. Yeah. But listen, Phil asked us to a party at the State Department tonight, and I think it would be really fun if you came along. Oh, Mary, if Phil wants to come along, he can join us here. You're just gonna sit here again? Wait for the phone to ring? Well, sometimes you have to wait around like that if you want a really good time. You didn't listen to me last night, and you had a dull evening. <laughs> I lied. I didn't have a dull evening, Mr. Grant. I had one of the most exciting evenings of my life. What could be so exciting at a restaurant? Well, we sat next to the Secretary of State, and yeah. Phil knows him. He introduced him to me. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we went to a couple of parties with some legislative assistants. Oh, Mr. Grant, it was wonderful. And then we drove all around Washington. And you call that a good time? <laughs> well, I think it's certainly on a par with watching your phone. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
you, you, you just do what you want. I'm going to stay here and wait for my buddies to come through. Mr. Grant, you haven't worked here in 10 years. I don't think any of those people are going to call you. I didn't know. I, I didn't want to say that. I just, it just blurted out. Because I want you to come with us tonight so you can have a really good time. You don't think anybody's going to call, huh? Poor old Lou Grant. Little funny in the head, huh? Oh, Going no. back to those past glories. Doesn't realize time has passed him by. Oh, a little cuckoo, huh, Mary? I don't think you're a little cuckoo. In a couple of weeks, I'll be sitting on the curb with water in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You just listen to me, Mary. Those people are going to call. I know it. And I bet deep down, you know it too, don't you? Yes. <laughs> you don't take that long and say yes. You take that long and it means no. What you just gave me was a mercy yes. I don't need that kind of yes. I don't need that kind of yes. Just a simple answer. Are you sticking with me or not? Oh, boy, you're making this so hard for me. Tough. Mr. Grant, you know how fond I am of you. Yeah. Last night, all I could think about was you sitting up here in your room alone like a jerk. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but I just think it would be unfair to me to ruin my only weekend in Washington just because you're too stubborn to have a good time. I should have brought Ted. <laughs> I will never forgive you for that. <laughs> How do you like it? I suggest you check the spelling of Australia. The story is about Austria. <laughs> well, then, leave it then. <laughs> Isn't that ironic, Murray? Lou just called from Washington. He's having a lousy time, but look at us. We've never had so much fun. Oh. <laughs> telephone, Murray. Murray, telephone. I'm busy, Ted. Producers don't answer phones. Baxter, WGM News. Oh, hiya, Ken. How you been, fella? Nice to hear from you. Who's Ken? He's the head of our film crew. Hey, Ken, when am I going to get to meet that wife of yours? <laughs> well, have you ever get married, then? <laughs> Look, Ken, don't rush into marriage. I mean, why buy the car when you're getting enough free ice cream to choke a horse? <laughs> Go ahead, Ken. Look, what does he want, Ted? Ken sure talks fast, doesn't What's he? What's happened, Ted? I don't know. He's so excited, I can't make heads or tails of it. Something about a fire. <laughs> Hello, Ken. Hey, this is Murray. Yeah, uh, what's up? Oh, I see. Well, look, uh, just uh, sit tight and don't worry, and I'll get back to you. Right. What is it, Murray? There's a four-alarm fire right next to a dynamite factory. Get a film crew out there. Yeah. There's also a robbery going on at Commonwealth Bank on 4th Street. They've got three hostages. Get a film crew out there. Oh, Ted, but you only have one film crew. Well, <laughs> which one should I send the film crew to? Well, the only thing to do is... No. No. You're the producer. Produce. <laughs> Uh, a sinister but robbery. Okay. <laughs> It'll make it the fire. It'll make it the robbery. Fire, robbery, fire, robbery. If I guess it right, will you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you need help? Uh, send it to the fire. Good, Ted. That means we lose the robbery. Story. All right, then send it to the robbery. Or miss what could be the biggest fire story of the year. <laughs> Murray, you gotta help me. I don't know what to do. I'll do anything. <laughs> okay, Ted. I'll tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> For fifty dollars. <laughs> Cover anything you want. <laughs> huh? 
Come in. Hi. Hi. I'm glad you're still up. What? Well, I just wanted to say I'm sorry you didn't join us tonight. I... I'm really sorry you didn't join me, Mary. Would you like a drink? No, no, thanks. Did you have a nice evening? Yeah, really nice. Phil took me to a great party in Georgetown. I met the Assistant Secretary of Defense. <sighs> no kidding? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. So, what did you do with yourself tonight? Oh, a couple of old friends dropped over here. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I bet you had a wonderful time seeing him again. Yeah, yeah, it, <sighs> it, it was kind of fun. <laughs> John Glenn told the funniest story. He was... He was John Glenn, the astronaut? Yeah, yeah. He was getting into his spacecraft on his first trip, and he... John Glenn of... is an old friend of yours? No, no, no. I never met him before. He came with Hubert. <laughs> Hubert? Humphrey. Anyway, it was the funniest story. I thought Eric Servite was going to bust a gut. <laughs> he was climbing into his space capsule. Severide was here tonight. Yeah. He couldn't stay long. He was just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. <laughs> Giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. How'd she get home? The Fords gave her a ride. <laughs> Mary? Mm -hmm. You you don't believe that the president was here tonight, do you? Oh, of course I do believe the president was here. What? Lincoln here, too? <laughs> what, what do you think I did, Maria? Huh? You think I made up this whole thing just to, just to impress you? Huh? You think I ordered up a whole bunch of drinks and, and, and coffee and, and ashtrays and filled them with cigarette butts? Huh? You, you think I went through all that to try and make you believe that I knew some important people? Is that what you think? Man, don't you know? It doesn't matter to me whether or not you know important people. Couldn't possibly make you more important to me than you already are. Well, I want to... Boy. Hello. Oh. Hello, Betty. <laughs> it's... It's Mrs. Ford, the president's wife. Huh? Huh? Oh. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, Mary, Mary, would you look in that chair over there and see if there's a pipe? It's the president's favorite pipe, and he thinks it might have fallen out of his pocket. <laughs> well, what do you know? My, my, what a surprise. The president's pipe. <laughs> yeah, 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 Betty, yeah. Mary found it. That's right, that's right. Uh, that's the girl I was telling you about. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Hold on. Mary, Mrs. Ford wants to talk to you. Hello. Hello, Mary. This is Betty Ford. Hi, Betty. <laughs> this is Mary, Queen of Scots. <laughs> Well, I have to go now. Well, I just wanted to tell you I'm sorry we missed you. 
Look, I don't know who you are or how Mr. Grant got you to take part in this childish charade. Please just tell Lou we'll have the pipe picked up. Yeah, but uh, it's really very late and I'd like to get to sleep, so I'll say goodbye now. Oh, and incidentally, your impression of Betty Ford really stinks. <laughs> I wanted to see. <laughs> Still upset about Ted. Upset? Not at all. It's amazing how calm one gets when the end is near. <laughs> Bye. Bye -bye. Bye. Now <laughs> <coughs> I have your attention, please. I know what a difficult time this is for everyone. Nobody was closer to Lou and Mary than I was. <laughs> Rest assured, the torch has been passed, the ban has been lifted from the dust, and the ship of state is back on its course once again. And the clowns are running the circus. <laughs> Who'd you thought, Mary? Now, as your leader, you'll find that I'm firm but understanding. You'll learn to love me and lay down your life for me. Carry on. He didn't say he could use his office. Didn't say I couldn't. <laughs> it's over. Hi. Hi. Okay, our first night in Washington. What are we gonna do? Oh, uh, I'm not sure yet. Hasn't anybody returned any of your calls? No, no, but, but they're, they're gonna. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Anyway, I was with you at the seminar all day. They probably already called, and I missed them. Oh, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. they'll probably call while we're out to dinner, and then we can yeah. check when we get back. So, yeah. what restaurant shall we go to? <laughs> restaurant? Mary, you can go to a restaurant in any city in the world. Hey, look, there are probably five terrific parties going on in Washington tonight. Now, I've got some feelers out. And we're just going to wait until they call. We're just going to wait here? <laughs> well, this is where the calls are going to come. Oh, but Mr. Grant, I've never been to Washington before. It's my first night in the Capitol. I'd like to see some of it. Mary, don't worry. He was, he was John Glenn, the astronaut? Yeah, yeah. He was getting into his spacecraft on his first trip, and he... John Glenn is an old friend of yours? No, no, no. I never met him before. He came with Hubert. <laughs> Hubert? Humphrey. Anyway, it was the funniest story. I thought Eric Silverite was going to bust a gut. <laughs> he was climbing into this Eric space capsule. Eric was here tonight. Yeah. 
He couldn't stay long. He was just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. <laughs> just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. How'd she get home? The Fords gave her a ride. <laughs> Mary, mm -hmm. you, you don't believe that the president was here tonight, do you? Oh, of course I do believe the president was here. Was Lincoln here, too? <laughs> what, what do you think I did, Mary? Huh? You think I made up this whole thing just to, just to impress you? Huh? You think I ordered up a whole bunch of drinks? And, and, and coffee and, and ashtrays and fill them with cigarette butts, huh? You, you think I went through all that to try and make you believe that I knew some important people? Is that what you think? Man, don't you know? It doesn't matter to me whether or not you know important people. Couldn't possibly make you more important to me than you already are. Well, I want to... Boy. Hello. Oh. Hello, Betty. <laughs> it's, it's Mrs. Ford, the president's wife. Huh? Huh? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Uh, Mary, Mary, would you look in that chair over there and see if there's a pipe? It's the president's favorite pipe, and he thinks it might have fallen out of his pocket. <laughs> No, my, my, what a surprise. The president's pipe. <laughs> yeah, 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 Betty, yeah. Mary found it. That's right, that's right. Uh, that's the girl I was telling you about. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Hold on. Mary? Good reason, oh. Lou. <laughs> you want to make me a producer? Oh. God bless you, Lou. Hey, how about that? Ted Baxter with the 6 o'clock news, starring Ted Baxter, produced by Ted Baxter. Come on, Lou. You've got to tell Murray that you're putting me in charge. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'll, I'll tell him later. Tell him now, Lou. He won't believe me. No. You tell him, and I'll watch his face. <laughs> Say, say, Murray. Yeah, hello. Ted's in charge. Uh, what's that, Lou? I'm sorry I didn't hear what you said. Louder, Lou. <laughs> Ted's in charge of the news while we're away. Ted who? I wanted to see. <laughs> Still upset about Ted. Upset? Not at all. It's amazing how calm one gets when the end is near. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? I know what a difficult time this is for everyone. Nobody was closer to Lou and Mary than I was. <laughs> Rest assured, 
torch has been passed, the veil has been lifted from the dust, and the ship of state is back on its course once again. And the clowns are running the circus. <laughs> Hold your thought, Mary. Now, as your leader, you find that I'm firm but understanding. You'll learn to love me and lay down your life for me. Carry on. He didn't say he could use his office. Didn't say I couldn't. Too. Well, the only thing to do is... No. No. You're the producer. Produce. <laughs> uh, a sinister robbery. Okay. I don't make it the fire. I don't make it the robbery. Fire robbery, fire robbery. If I guess it right, will you tell me? Why don't you help? Uh, send it to the fire. Good, Ted. That means we lose the robbery. Story. All right, then send it to the robbery. Or miss what could be the biggest fire story of the year. Murray, you gotta help me. I don't know what to do. I'll do anything. Okay, Ted. I'll tell you exactly what to do. <laughs> For fifty dollars. <laughs> Cover anything you want. Come in. Hi. Hi. I'm glad you're still up. What? Well, I just wanted to say I'm sorry you didn't join us tonight. I... I'm really sorry you didn't join me, Mary. Would you like a drink? No, no, thanks. Did you have a nice evening? Yeah, really nice. Phil took me to a great party in Georgetown. I met the Assistant Secretary of Defense. <sighs> no kidding? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What did you do with yourself tonight? Oh, a couple of old friends dropped over here. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I bet you had a wonderful time seeing them again. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was kind of fun. <laughs> John Glenn told the funniest story. He was... He was John Glenn, the astronaut? Yeah, yeah. He was getting into his spacecraft on his first trip, and he... John Glenn is an old friend of yours? No, no, no. I never met him before. He came with Hubert. <laughs> Hubert? Humphrey. Anyway, it was the funniest story. I thought Eric Servite was going to bust a gut. <laughs> he was climbing into his space capsule. Severide was here tonight. Yeah. He couldn't stay long. He was just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. <laughs> just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. How'd she get home? Your story. I thought Eric Servite was going to bust a gut. <laughs> he was climbing into his space capsule. Severide was here tonight. Yeah. He couldn't stay long. He was just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. <laughs> just giving Ethel Kennedy a lift. How'd she get home? The Fords gave her a ride. <laughs> Mary, mm -hmm. you, you don't believe that the president was here tonight, do you? Oh, of course I do believe the president was here. Was Lincoln here, too? <laughs> what, what do you think I did, Maria? Huh? You think I made up this whole thing just to, just to impress you? Huh? You think I ordered up a whole bunch of drinks? And, and, and coffee, and, and ashtrays, and fill them with cigarette butts, huh? You, you think I went through all that to try and make you believe that I knew some important people? Is that what you think? Man, don't you know? It doesn't matter to me whether or not you know important people. Couldn't possibly make you more important to me than you already are. Well, I want to... Boy. Hello. 
Oh. Hello, Betty. <laughs> it's, it's Mrs. Ford, the president's wife. Huh? Huh? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Uh, Mary, Mary, would you look in that chair over there and see if there's a pipe? It's the president's favorite pipe, and he thinks it might have fallen out of his pocket. <laughs> No, my, my, what a surprise. The president's pipe. <laughs> yeah, 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 Betty, yeah. Mary found it. That's right, that's right. Uh, that's the girl I was telling you about. Huh? Oh, sure, sure. Hold on. Mary, Mrs. Ford wants to talk to you. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mary. This is Betty Ford. Hi. Hi. All set for the seminar? Yeah, almost. How'd you go last night? Any of your friends? Call back? Uh, I don't know. I, uh, I dozed off. Uh, how'd I go with you? Oh, dull. It was dull evening, dull, yeah. dull conversation. And I lost all that sleep, you know, got in very late. Yeah. But listen, Phil asked us to a party at the State Department tonight, and I think it would be really fun if you came along. Oh, well, Mary, if Phil wants to come along, he can join us here. You're just gonna... Sit here again? Wait for the phone to ring? Well, sometimes you uh, have to wait around like that if you want a really good time. You didn't listen to me last night, and you had a dull evening. <laughs> I lied. Well, I didn't have a dull evening. Mr. Grant, I had one of the most exciting evenings of my life. What could be so exciting at a restaurant? Well, we sat next to the Secretary of State, and yes. Phil knows him. He introduced him to me. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we went to a couple of parties with some legislative assistants. Oh, Mr. Grant, it was wonderful. And then we drove all around Washington. And you call that a good time? <laughs> well, I think it's certainly on a par with watching your phone. <laughs> You, you just do what you want. I'm going to stay here and wait for my buddies to come through. Mr. Grant, you haven't worked here in 10 years. I don't think any of those people are going to call you. I didn't know. I, I didn't want to say that. I just, it just blurted out. Because I want you to come with us tonight so you can have a really good time. You don't think anybody's going to call, huh? Poor old Lou Grant. Little funny in the head, huh? Oh, Going no. back to those past glories. Doesn't realize time has passed him by. Oh, a little cuckoo, huh, Mary? I don't think you're a little cuckoo. In a couple of weeks, I'll be sitting on the curb with water in my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you just listen to me, Mary. Those people are going to call. I know it. And I bet deep down, you know it too, don't you? Yes. <laughs> you don't take that long and say yes. You take that long and it means no. What you just gave me was a mercy yes. I don't need that kind of yes. I don't need that kind of yes. Just a simple answer. Are you sticking with me or not? Oh, boy, you're making this so hard for me. Tough. Mr. Grant, you know how fond I am of you. Yeah. Last night, all I could think about was you sitting up here in your room alone like a jerk. <laughs> to ruin my only weekend in Washington just because you're too stubborn to have a good time. I should have brought Ted. <laughs> <laughs>